You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Wendy. There will be body damage. Jeep Mama. Are you sure? Josh. Yeah, I don't think so. And Tony. I think that's a huge deal. So sit back, strap in, and brace yourself. The Jeep Talk Show takes a holiday. And you know, by, by that uh, sentence, you probably think it's one day. But we're taking off a week and a day. So no new episodes Christmas week. Episodes will return on Wednesday, December 28th. Uh, it will be a roundtable episode uh, that we will record on December 27th, which, of course, is a Tuesday. Uh, sign up now for our newsletter to keep our uh, keep up with our episode schedule. Uh, you know, we'll be we should be good for the rest. Of, I mean, 2022. I don't think we're going to have any any uh, days or, or, or weeks off, uh, uh, barring any health issues or anything. You know, something unforeseen. Uh, but uh, the newsletter certainly will be a way to keep up with uh, or all the new episodes when they're going to come out or when we're going to be on uh, uh, not doing episodes. The JTS team is here to inform and entertain you about Jeeps. If you are new to the Jeep world or thinking about jumping in and getting your feet dirty, you're in the right place. Whether you're interested in having a unique off-road vehicle ready to hit the trails or that daily driver that's also a weekend warrior, this show is for you. Find out more information about the Jeep Talk Show at jeeptalkshow.com. Hello, Jeeper. I'm Josh. And on this episode of the Jeep Talk Show, I'm going to tell you about a tragic story that led to a Jeeper losing his life. And he was nowhere near a trail. We'll talk about a big move that Jeep's parent company is investing in. And later we talk more about the fuel systems in Jeeps. Well, howdy, it's Wendy. And don't forget to check out my segment, Newbie Nuggets, on Fridays. You're going to hear all kinds of things, like things for newest Jeepers and maybe even some funny stuff. Never know. <laughs> and, and damn it, Josh, what's the deal with all the doom and gloom? Our last episode had I a know. death. <laughs> Start, yeah, last episode's got dead. This episode's got dead. Hey, and, and it's this time of the year, people. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's too much happiness going around. Let's let's bring up let's bring everybody down. <laughs> bring everybody down. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tony, and on this episode, I'll be interviewing Luke Connor of Steinjager and the the new owners of Ace Engineering and Fab. They now yeah. own Ace Engineering and Fab. I think everybody's heard of uh, Ace Engineering and Fab. So yeah. you're, you're going to want to know where you can buy your, your goodies from both Steinjager and Ace Engineering Fab. <laughs> so Luke is going, you're pronouncing it wrong. So, sorry, right, Luke. Local Jeep News, National Jeep News, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. Well, back in the middle of August of 2021, the Jeep Talk Show broke a story about an all-new, soon-to-be-debuted special pink color for Jeeps. It was definitely not neon or Avon-like in color in any way. In fact, it was named after a character from the 70s hit TV show Happy Days. Tuscadero Pink is what it was called, and we talked about it twice on this show back on episode 506 and 512. Because the Jeep Talk Show is the number one most downloaded Jeep podcast in the world, the story got out, and since then, the popularity of this pink is nearly unprecedented. Jeep announced today, literally, as we are recording this episode, uh, that it has extended the order window for its Tuscadero pink exterior color for the 2022 Wrangler through the end of December, wow. citing customer demand for the limited run exterior finish that was introduced for 2021. The color has proved to be exceedingly exceedingly popular, surpassing 30,000 orders to wow. become Jeep's most My popular God. special code of the entire 2021 production run. And to that, I have just four words. Jeep, where's our check? Exactly. <laughs> Tuscadero was originally supposed to be canceled after 2021 model year production wrapped up, but continuing demand prompted Jeep's product planners to keep it on the books for 2022. The color, which Jeep describes in my opinion, inaccurately, as, quote, a deep and intense chromatic magenta. <laughs> and it's often alongside other limited production colors, including gecko, lime green, and others. Jim Morrison, vice president and head of Jeep Brand for North America, said in the announcement today that Jeep has foreseen Tuscadero to be popular, and the customer response has been in line with their expectations. Uh-huh. Sure. Uh -huh. So if you're buying a Jeep anytime between now and the end of this year, and you want in the want it in the hottest color of 2021, Tuscadero Pink will only cost you just $395 extra. It's funny. I, I have a friend who wheels, and she just bought this color. So it'll be interesting to see it up close and personal. 
This color Again, needs to be. Uh, where's our check? What's the what's the V8? Is it a 392, a 3 yes. 392? Yes. So this this color needs a 392 in it. I mean, you know, the the the, <laughs> the, the loud engine and the loud color uh, go, yeah. go no, side by I side. Agree. So lifted you, big tires. Oh yes. needs a lot of oh, stuff. Yeah. Jeeps no. should be bright and obnoxious colors or red. Well, they they look good in bright colors. They really do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they do. It's, it's something you want to stand out so people can uh, see. Hey, I'm in a Jeep and you're not. Um, so you they guys, look yeah, you guys remember uh, Deadpool, Deadpool Gambino, right? Yes. Heck yeah. Yeah. And you, and you know he yeah, is a salesperson uh, selling these Jeeps. And yes. uh, whenever you mentioned the the gecko green. I don't think yeah. you guys are aware of this. He has the same color suit that he wears when he's selling Jeeps. Gecko wait, green. Wait, he wears a gecko green suit? It looks just like the color on the Jeep. So when he stands How next to the gecko rips? green Jeep, he just disappears? Lance in. He has like a green screen. <laughs> Hi, I'm your salesman. And in case you lose me, there's no way in hell you can. That's right. Because <laughs> I blend in with the Jeep. <laughs> no kidding yeah it's really it's really funny uh if you know so does he have one of these uh magenta what's this color tuscadero tuscadero he, he may uh but uh the, when we were discussing it and i've seen the picture so that's why one of the reasons okay. why it really sticks got out got it he's still uh, you know he stands there with the, uh, uh, somebody that's buying a jeep and he's got that green suit on it oh my god it, it, the, he must ha- carry a 12 volt battery dragging it around to keep that suit <laughs> powered it's just so Leon. bright <laughs> love it yeah yeah well you know anything to you know we need to talk uh talk travis into getting a, a gecko green suit for when he's selling jeeps oh god i should send you guys the picture of the suit i wore for a christmas party a couple of years ago oh yes please send it please send it i want to see <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll dig that up here in a little bit okay for you guys but, uh, select the picture carefully i don't want the a repeat of what happened that one time no, I'll, I'll be wearing more than just a stocking. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> well, this guy is going to be wearing uh, some interesting uh, uh, silverware here pretty soon. This guy was arrested in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, for shooting and killing a man who sped past him in a Jeep. It happened on Sunday around 9.30 p.m., and police say that 43-year-old Gerald Scott Ramos shot Darius Waller to death while he was sitting in his Jeep outside of his home. Waller was taken to a nearby hospital where he was pronounced dead. During the investigation, police found through witness interviews and surveillance video that the victim was sitting in his Jeep with the headlights on when Ramos approached from the rear of the vehicle and then fired eight times into the window of the driver's side door. Ramos then walked back to his residence just a few doors away from the shooting. Police said that Ramos and Waller did not know each other. He told officers that he was walking home from his brother's house when a Jeep allegedly sped past him and nearly struck him. Ramos said that that, that that made him, quote, so angry that he went to his apartment to try to, quote, cool down, where he decided to get his 9mm Taurus handgun and go back outside. Unfortunately, that decision led to a Jeeper's needless death, and a man giving up his constitutional rights to spend the rest of his life behind bars, bars over a road rage incident. He was arrested 5.15 a.m. Monday without incident. He is charged with first-degree murder, third-degree murder, and possessing an instrument of crime. Ramos is awaiting arraignment on Monday. How sad to allow the... That rage to just take over. I mean, Seriously. first off, there's a little problem with the Jeep sped past him. We don't how know fast? how close, whether or not this incident yes. even happened. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, you know, he could have been on the sidewalk and the Jeep came by. The, the exhaust was loud. Maybe he was going 10 miles over the speed limit. Sure. And, and, and that was enough. You know, who knows? Who knows? So uh, you know, maybe this guy was walking in the street, uh, you know, in the bicycle lane and not on the sidewalk right. or something. And the Jeep went past him. Uh, you know, two lanes of traffic, the Jeep couldn't move over any further. You know, he was well within his lane. Uh, and this guy was just, you know, being a dick. You well, know, who knows? I'll just mention none of those scenarios equate to shooting somebody. Well, I <laughs> no, agree. That's what I'm saying. I, mean, I was leading to that. I'm like, either way, you know, it doesn't lead none to of that. I mean, unless he was literally bounced off the fender. You know, uh, you know, when, when well, he was on or his, sidewalk, or his kid was run over. You can't. You know, well, his, that's that his would be more understandable. But you can't uh, be scared from a, a vehicle. Go home, get your gun, go to the person, and then shoot them. I mean, oh. if it's that big a deal, call the police, report it. They're not going to do anything, I'm sure, unless there was an injury yeah. involved. But but at least you alert them to the this this person that's driving that way. But. Don't, don't take your your gun should only be used whenever it's in defense of your life or somebody else's. That's right. correct. 
Very sad. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely sad. Well, this is not necessarily sad, but an interesting uh, way of things to come. The chief executive of Jeep's parent company, Stellantis NV, is Carlos Tavares, and he is looking to give the global auto manufacturer a major tech upgrade. How is he planning on doing it? Well, in a public presentation just this last Tuesday, Mr. Tavares outlined plans to hire thousands of software engineers and collaborate with a company called Foxconn Technology Group on developing a special set of semiconductors for its vehicles. The goal is to deliver a new generation of technology-packed models that can be updated throughout their life uh, throughout their life cycle using downloadable software with customizable features unique to each of the company's 14 brands. Now, Stellantis and its shareholders are looking uh, to the future production of a target of around $22.5 billion in annual revenue by the end of the decade. That's the end of the 2020s. And that much money in that little time. That's a boatload of new money coming in. But where would it all come from exactly? Mm -hmm. Well, Stellantis is planning on turning this new proprietary technology venture (laughs) into a long-term revenue stream by selling software-led offerings and subscriptions related to the vehicles that it makes. Mr. Tavares believes that the software is at the very core of the future of Jeep and other Stellantis brands, and that outsourcing of, of this would restrict the company's abilities moving forward. To reach this revenue target, Stellantis also plans to leverage various partnerships for autonomous driving offerings, That's right. That means self-driving Jeeps and so-called smart cockpits, a revamp of a Jeep's dashboard, for instance, designed for an ultra-connected personal vehicle experience. For instance, a uh, a Jeep owner specifically, uh, Stellantis plans to sell an off-grid trail navigation feature that will allow drivers to connect with each other individually or even in convoys, even if there is no network coverage. Very nice. Sounds pretty cool. But, you know, this all sounds very cutting edge, fancy and futuristic. But let me read between the lines here and give you my takeaway from all this. Jeep is basically planning on making you pay a monthly fee to use a built-in oh, yeah. CB radio of sorts. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that, that's th- 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 it is a gross oversimplification, but that is basically what we're talking about here. So I- I'm, I'm, to that end, I'm not really super thrilled about this. But that being said... We have seen some teaser videos in the last couple few months, especially right around SEMA and before, of what Jeep is kind of planning on doing. There was a little bit of a uh, future of Jeep video that they released, I think, around August or September, uh, and, and that had some teaser uh, shots in it as far as what Jeep is capable of doing. Where We talked briefly about dropping uh, the Jeep off at the trailhead, you hiking up the mountain, uh, but then your Jeep drives up the mountain and meets you up at the uh, at the top uh, for you to drive it yourself down uh, and, and things like that. Um, self-driving, uh, you know, you just go ahead and take a nap while the Jeep uh, reaches to the top of the mountain, uh, you know, things like that. All sorts of really fancy and, and cool looking heads up displays and, and, and uh, just all sorts of really interesting stuff is, is on the drawing board. Whether or not it comes to fruition, how soon, how much it's going to cost and whether or not you have to pay a monthly fee for it. Well... All that is up in the air at this point. I, I think it's interesting, like you said, to see, are they going to start charging people to utilize the cars? I mean, think about well, that the, software and technology. They could track you. They could know everything you're doing. They could, uh, I mean, there's, there's a whole other way this could go. Of this too. Yeah, you're right. Well, 100%. Keep, now there, keep, ahead, in, keep in mind, if Jeep does this, then there are a lot of third-party individuals, third-party companies, or even individuals that can mimic uh, what they're doing on a non-subscription basis, like mesh ner- networking, for example. You can set up a mesh ne- mesh network if everybody has a router in their Jeep, and that mesh network will forward things to the other routers. So you could actually do the same thing uh, off, the, you off the grid. Providing firewall of that router. And Jeep may be putting uh, some things in place that would prevent third-party software. Oh, no. From being Just use your that. phone. You don't necessarily have to use the Jeep thing at all. Or you could use a CB. I mean, you know, for that matter. Well, <laughs> for I'm, exactly. I'm, thinking, I'm thinking GMRS that's pumping out uh, GPS data because then that you, whenever you d- uh, made your uh, last transmission, the GPS information would go to the mesh network and mark you on the trail. So all you'd have to do is transmit to uh, let everybody else know where you were. So there's ways of doing this. And I think that uh, you will see people that whenever they're, they're faced with having to spend money, uh, they'll work uh, thousands of hours for free so they don't have to spend any money for the subscription. 
<laughs> yeah. No, it's it's funny you you mentioned as far as GPS uh, tagging and stuff like that because one of the features that they uh, have been looking at is is knowing where everybody is in your group at at any given time. Oh, I love so that if you've idea. got thir- thirteen vehicles on the trail. But that spans over the course of maybe a mile and a half or something like that, just because the way things have stretched out. And you don't know where Bob is. You thought he was the third vehicle back, but somebody's saying that he's not there anymore. Well, you can look on your screen, and your infotainment system will tell you where Bob and his Jeep is at. Well, let's use the right name. Let's use the right name, Josh. Guy. And we also need to know if he... If he's level or not. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how much uh, telemetry data is, is going to be uh, 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 transmitted as well. They are talking about um, power resources, so especially for the uh, next generation of 4XE uh, drivetrains. They're talking about unlocking power or possibly even extended battery time through a monthly service, oh, which I think is man. absolute and utter BS. Yeah. I paid for it's, the vehicle the and future. all of its capabilities. You're not right. going to charge me a goddamn dime for me to Just use to drive it. another yeah. 10 horsepower on it or something but like that. it's coming. No, you know it's you. coming. Well, and, and, and if you think about it, this kind of falls in line with the push to um, keep people from working on their own vehicles. You don't own the software. You don't own right. the computer. That's ours, Ooh. and if you mention, if you mess with it, you're we could sue you. We could take you. You yeah. could be put in jail. Boy, and if you yeah, think about your it, warranty. Yeah, Ooh. and if you think about it, this falls in right in line with uh, making people pay that monthly sub- subscription. Yeah. Because if if you can't, if legally you can't mess with that stuff, then you either have to either not have it or run the risk of going to jail by changing it wow. yourself. So yeah, th- we we it, want it, the ability to work on things, folks. Please it's believe. Not me. a good way to go. Yeah. yeah. None mm-hmm. of this really is is leaving a good a good taste in my mouth. This doesn't leave me a, a, a good feeling at all. Uh, this is is over capitalistic. I mean, I'm I'm all about capitalism, 110 uh, percent. But this is sort of taking things uh, a wee bit too far. This is a bridge too far. When you're going to make me pay a monthly fee to use the horsepower that my Jeep is capable of producing. But you limit it so that I have to pay to get it. That that's not capitalism. That that's control. Yeah. And 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 I don't need you controlling how I use my Jeep. So yeah, this th- I, I I don't know how far this is going to go. But the things that we've talked about just in this segment are the kinds of things that they are producing. That they are talking about being able to not only make but also bring into production. So this is what's on the drawing board, folks. If if you don't like it. If you have some opinions about it, I highly suggest you start you know, drafting that strongly worded letter to Jeep. <laughs> and it just dawned on me, you know what would taste good in your mouth, Josh? Oh, God, no. God. Please don't. <laughs> tell me tell me what it is, here, and I won't do it. Here comes the sound bite, guys. Ready for it? Beaver nuggets. Beaver nuggets. <laughs> Yeah. No, not we, turkey. We need, a, yeah. we need a beaver nugget. You were nugget. hoping it was beaver nuggets. We need a no. beaver nugget sound. I you don't do know what it would make. Because the turkey's not working anymore. It's done. Oh, no. I love the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have a news tip or response to any one of our stories, please let uh, let us know what you have to say. You can do it by phone or by email. And if you don't know how, uh, well, by just by all means, head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. That's our website. Hit the contact button. You're going to find out how to reach out to us and engage with the show. I'm thinking of a special episode, 20 so, 27 hours of turkey gobble. What do you think? Most <laughs> downloaded <laughs> episode ever. <laughs> yeah. And it and it ended at you know, 20 seconds in. Okay, just kidding. And there's a, there's a, and there's a gunshot a one hour into the... <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> Into the listening. And, and everybody would be happy because this sound would be done. <laughs> You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Oh, you certainly are. And if you don't know what the 4x4 Radio Network is, well, it is your one-stop shop for all of the best off-road audio that the world has to offer. We've got something for everybody at the 4x4RadioNetwork.com website. The On the Trail podcast is there. Trail Chasers, the Center Steer podcast. The 4x4 Podcast. Of course, the Jeep Talk Show is there as well. Lots of great off-road shows. It's what it's all about, right? It's all for free as well. And it's all in one place. 4x4radionetwork.com. That's the number four. Letter X. The number four. Radionetwork.com. We'll see you there.
Hey, coming up in Tech Talk, your Jeep needs fuel, but did you know how it all works? We continue our multi-part series in Jeep fuel systems. There's like this liquid, and it gets squirted from there over to here, and then you it goes... <laughs> but very, I'll, very... I'll, I'll leave the technical talk for you, Josh. <laughs> Why did you become a paid subscriber to the Jeep Talk Show? Jeep Talk Show is in my weekly rotation. Look forward to it every week, each and every Friday. You can be a paid subscriber and help support the show you love, the Jeep Talk Show. I support a great podcast and a lifelong Jeeper myself. Continue to learn with each and every episode that I listen to. Just go to JeepTalkShow.com and look for the big yellow subscribe button. Absolutely. If you like Jeeps, anything to do with Jeeps, I like it for the, the technical, clear content, uh, advice, and learning. All right, you rat bastards out there, and especially you paid subscribers that are no longer or technically no longer rat bastards. But as we always say, you can still call yourself that. Uh, Go over to JeepTalkShow.com. Look for the store, uh, the word store. You click on that, and you can order your Jeep Talk Show rat bastard toe tags. No, I don't mean like you're pulling a Jeep out of a ditch or something. I mean like the toe, you know, like when you're dead and they put the tag on your toe. That's the kind of toe I'm talking about. So you can get these toe tags, 20 of them for $8. $8. It's about what we cost uh, for us to print them and send them out to you because we're not trying to make any money off of this. We just want to bring you into the fold of being an infectious agent so that you can get, get a bag of rats, which I mean... That just in, by itself sounds like a thing you'd want to do. Even if you weren't doing this, order a bag of rats from Amazon. You know, honey, has the bag of rats come in yet? <laughs> you know, so it just, it just, it's, it writes its own jokes. Anyway, so you, you get these 20 toe tags, a bag of rats, 20 of them, and then you put them on the cards and then you hang them on Jeeps. It's kind of like the duck thing, but it's like what you do Wait, if you got a bad attitude. <laughs> so go over to jeeptalkshow.com look for the little store uh jeeptalkshow.com at the very top click it order your uh, rat bastard toe tags today from the mind of Nikki g hey this is Nikki g and uh, i've got a few comments about past shows first thing i want to talk about is the stinky Jeep plant in Michigan. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the smell is so foul that it gets into the interior of the Jeepster building there. The other day, Wendy, my lovely wife, not the lovely co-host, although the lovely co-host could be my wife and lo- my lovely wife could be the co-host. <sighs> Let me know if that one's getting old. But anyhow, we were going to uh, 7-Eleven to get some hot dogs. And uh, oh, no. yeah, shortly after, there was a strange odor in the Jeep. Go figure. And the second thing I want to talk about is I want to put this whole red Jeep, black Jeep to uh, to rest. You know, I drive a red Cherokee. And Wendy, uh, my lovely wife, not the lovely co-host, although the lovely co-host could be my wife and my wife could be the lovely co-host. Uh, again, she drives a black Cherokee. So I've determined that boys drive red Jeeps. And girls drive black Jeeps. Ah, and Josh, gosh. I know you have a black Cherokee. <laughs> and I got to say, we accept you just the way you are. Oh, Nikki G is not a homophobe. <laughs> he is all for gay marriage. Because why should us straight people be the only ones that are miserable? Exactly. Please send all your hate mail in care of the Jeep Talk Show. <laughs> That's not why I'm calling. I'm calling to tell you that I'm really not that good at playing hide and seek. Yeah, it seems like good friends are really hard to find. (laughs) All right, boys and girls, I'll chat you later, and you have a good one. Bye. We are uh, taking up a collection to get uh, Nikki G some therapy, so if you'd like to be a part of that. (laughs) And some new jokes. (laughs) <laughs> oh no the all the jokes are, are, are all, all part of the charm he's, he's, <laughs> he's repeating six, some though <laughs> he's had what six years of, of weekly bad jokes i don't know yeah <laughs> i love it been, he's doing a great they've job all been new <laughs> i love I, I just again i am just honored that week after week just like you guys come here here our listeners yep. come here Week after week, Nikki G is, you know, giving us this 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 work that he does. He's awesome. For the show, cool. and it's wonderful, Thanks. and we love having him on here because, I mean, how many podcasts do you know that has a regular person calling in every week contributing to the show? Not in a positive Thanks. way, just but contributing <laughs> to He's the show. He's contributing yeah, in a positive you know. way. We love you, Nikki G. <laughs> that, I mean, just keeps turning up. Yes, and we love it.
<laughs> no, I'm kidding. I do want to put in a request love, in love for. I, I want to do do want to put a, a request in for whale song. I just love the whale songs. People don't know what I'm talking about. You need to go back and listen Thank to our God. past episodes. <laughs> you got tech questions? Ah, oh, what do I ever? We have answers. Oh, that's good. I can, I, it's tech talk with Jeep Talk. Yahoo! Now, in episode 540, in the last Tech Talk, we continued a multi-part series on the different types of fuel systems found in Jeeps. If you didn't catch either of the last two Tech Talks, be sure to go back and start with episode 535 and then 540 to get caught up. Now, we started things off with the first generation of Wrangler and the carburetors you find in them. We then transitioned to the first generation of fuel injection and left off with how the TJ's 4-liter was uh, fed with its gasoline diet. In this Tech Talk, we move into the year 2007 and the introduction of the all-new JK Wrangler, along with an all-new engine option over those found in the YJ and the TJ. The Wrangler was now available with two all-new gasoline-powered engines, a 3.6-liter and a uh, V6 and a 3.8-liter V6. Aside from changing the engine options, the fuel systems would receive some big changes as well. The same type of fuel system would, re- uh, would return, meaning it was an MPI type of EFI. It still had things like injectors, fuel pump, fuel rail, throttle body, you know, all that sort of stuff. Now, obviously, many changes would be made to the system's various components in order to keep up with the modern age of ridiculous efficiency demands from the EPA, but they were all still there, just different. Now, the biggest change to the fuel delivery system would be the new cylinder deactivation feature, though. This brought a completely new type of solution to getting better MPGs. More power means more fuel, and cruising down the highway firing on all cylinders doesn't exactly keep the fuel tank all that happy. The JK's engine doesn't need to burn as much fuel if it's keeping a consistent speed as it does to accelerate. So if you're keeping a steady speed down the highway, this feature basically shuts down two cylinders in your engine, turning that V6 into a four-banger, providing better fuel economy. Now, the power of the V6 returns, however, when you push that skinny pedal down, but still offers the fuel economy of a four-cylinder for highway driving. It's truly like getting the best of both worlds. It's interesting to note that 2007 wasn't the first year for this technology. In fact, Jeep spent at least two years testing the market with this tech in the Grand Cherokees. Now, Chrysler, who was Jeep's parent company at the time, released their MDS, or Multi-Displacement System, which was their first, uh, first cylinder deactivation system sold in North America on large volume vehicles. This first generation of cylinder deactivation was, was only on the Hemi V8s and was far more aggressive, cutting half of the V8 cylinders after reaching cruising speed. Now, it's not as simple as I make it sound. There is a lot of science and engineering that goes into this very carefully choreographed sequence of events, and I could explain how it all works, but you're going to get lost with the level of complexity that just goes into the lifters alone, which are a critical part of how the cylinder deactivation works. And needless to say, the MDS system for the JK line of Wranglers was a first of its kind, and was, as with any firsts, really, it wasn't without its bugs and failures. Now, I was asked if I would go into things like vapor recovery, purge valves, and charcoal canisters, you know, all that sort of stuff. I figured I should at least touch on them a little bit since they are related to the fuel systems. Now, vapor canisters have been uh, been around and used on Jeeps since the days of the CJs. Gasoline vapors from the gas tank are stored in, in, in charcoal that is contained in the vapor canister to reduce vehicle emissions. Now, of course, this canister can only hold so much fuel vapor. Once the vehicle is running and conditions are correct, the vapors are drawn into the engine to be burned. Now, this has been done in different ways over the years, at first mechanically with vacuum and later electronically by the purge solenoid getting a signal from the computer telling it to open. The fumes are then pulled from the canister and sent to the engine. This whole system and its components are often referred to as the EVAP system. Gasoline does evaporate, so I guess this makes more sense and is easier to say than vapor system, I suppose. I don't know. In the next Tech Talk, we're going to wrap up all this fuel talk with the last, or should I say, the latest line of Jeep Wrangler, the JL. After that, we return to the old days of electrical and audio tips as we start a new series in speaker selection. Very interesting series. I really enjoyed it. I'm just learning a lot. Thank you for doing this. So listening to this, I had no idea about the JK was actually able to, you know, switch from like, uh, you know, six to four, four cylinders for fuel economy. Uh, but it reminded me of something I uh, heard a long time ago with uh, with GM. They actually uh, did something similar. Now this is a long time ago, and it may be uh, completely different. But uh, the uh, the GM system uh, back during the uh, fuel uh, uh, problem or the fuel uh, gasoline uh, availability or in the 70s, they came up with something that would take a V8 and the Cadillac and change it into a six cylinder or a four cylinder 
depending on the requirements of like you know the highway driving you were just that you were describing did, did it go did it go both six and four i didn't i i thought it was just in one one stage of reduction i did, did if it had two stages of reduction i i didn't know i, I i'm not 100 percent familiar with those systems but what i can say is is that a lot of these systems are are uh, they do the same sort of thing, mm -hmm. but they go about it in different ways. Yeah, well, they would have to, but just because somebody was going to sue somebody else if they did it the same oh, way. Oh, sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, you know, I thought it was crap back then, and it's probably crap now because it makes the engine that much more complex. And you can, I mean, I would assume they engineer it so that it, if it fails, it fails with all of the cylinders uh, running. But as I recall, and I may be wrong, they actually would open up the valves for the cylinders that they didn't want to fire. So they'd stop feeding it uh, fuel and open up the uh, one of the valves if, or both so that it would just kind of a little bit like a, be, uh, a free spinning uh, a propeller, sort of, so to speak. Uh, right, Ruvo right. Injectors get turned off. Uh, but I think it was a VVT variable valve timing or, or something like that. Oh, uh, was, yeah, it could be. One of the systems there uh, where they could they, they actually adjust the timing of the valves as far as when they would open and close. Uh, wasn't necessarily cam controlled, but it was. Uh, again, we can start getting into the weeds a little bit. With, well, that goes into the complexity thing I was talking about. Yeah. It's just, it's it's scary from the standpoint of uh, what's what's it going to do, you know, and where are you going to be when it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. But anyway, it's been around for a long, long time, and I had no idea it was in the J case. Yep, yep, and a lot of you Mopar guys uh, know that uh, the Hemi engines uh, have a, a a generation of this that is is prone to problems. Uh, and that there are workarounds and, and even some modifications and, some, and the aftermarket has definitely stepped in uh, to correct it. Uh, and for those of you guys who are, who are, are building Hemi engines or, or possibly looking at doing a Hemi uh, swap in your Jeep, uh, just take this into consideration. Uh, this is a system that you may want to consider actually modifying out of that engine. And there are ways to do that. They make kits uh, for that sort of stuff. Um, and so if you're looking at doing a Hemi swap, uh, just know that the was it the 5.7, 5.8, 5.9 liters, whatever they are, uh, the Hemi engines that would that would go into that have this technology. Now, if it came out of a truck, the Hemi truck engines did not have this uh, th this technology installed uh, in them. Yeah. They actually, they actually was that at your house? No, that was not weird. at my house. Uh, I don't know where that came from. I have no idea. That was really weird. I only have three tabs open, and none, none of them are producing audio. That was. Really weird. Well, talking about Hemi's and V8s, uh, that was kind of <laughs> sound like like a V8 accelerating very quickly. That was pretty uh, cool. No, they, yeah, they, they do make uh, kits out there that that sort of blocks this sort of stuff off. Uh, and the, the trucks didn't have the Hemi engines in the, in the trucks didn't have uh, this technology uh, because you know trucks are typically used for towing, uh, hauling things like that. They don't. Yeah, need they just to, didn't see the point. Or, is what it was. Yeah. Is because of the weight yeah. and everything else. So yeah, it makes sense. So yeah, a lot of interesting stuff. We we can go very deep with this with this, uh, but I will continue this conversation a little bit in the next tech talk uh, as we get up into uh, a little bit more of this technology as it has evolved into the modern day. Until then, if you have anything to add, maybe you have a question for tech talk, please just jump over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. That's the only link that you need to know. Jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. Click on that, send us a message. You can listen to the Jeep Talk Show live. You never know what will happen or where the conversation will go. You can only hear you. Uh oh. So you're actually getting the best part of the show, is what you're saying. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> join us every Thursday night and be part of our virtual campfire. It's the Zoom People Fall. Or oh, whoever the spokesperson oh, was. Sure. <laughs> we're, we're starting our own Zoom People podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Follow us on Facebook and know when and how you can join the conversation. Was it an accident or was it on purpose? You know, I noticed there's a, a trail of me blaming other people for things uh, that uh, happened to either the Jeep or <laughs> them only hearing one side of the audio. <laughs> From around the world. Or from your city. And sometimes just down the street. Howdy, neighbor. It's the Jeep Talk Show interview. Alrighty, ho, boys and girls. It's time for another Jeep Talk Show interview. And tonight we're going to be speaking with Luke. He has been a product manager for Steinjaeger for the last nine years, starting as employee number one, much better than employee number two, and recently took on the role as product manager for Ace Engineering as well. He has been in the automotive world his whole life and started out uh, as a mini 
trucker, eventually turning the corner to off-roading. Oh, thank God. Luke's current rig is a 2006 LJ on tons and 42-inch Treps, T-R-E-P-S, with a four-speed Atlas transfer case. Hallelujah. We can find out more about Steinjaeger. Uh, you can find out more about Steinjaeger by visiting uh, www.steinjaeger.com. That's S T E I N J A G E R dot com. And of course, we'll have this in our show notes in case my spelling is atrocious. Uh, and you can also uh, visit Ace Engineering at Ace Engineering and Fab. Dot com. Man, I think that breaks the limit on the number of letters you can have in a URL, <laughs> Luke. <laughs> oh, oh, I agree. I uh, I start putting spaces in there with, like I'm typing like a sentence sometimes, <laughs> and and Google just doesn't like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, everybody uh, everybody's heard of uh, Steinjaeger and Ace Engineering, but so uh, obviously the, the first question should be, uh, I mean, this hasn't been a long term uh connection you guys recently purchased ace engineering is that correct uh yeah we purchased them in june of this year 2021 um we were we were looking at how we could could get a bigger product line with more of a hardcore off-road feel uh quicker than me sitting at my desk developing one product at a time and (laughs) the opportunity arose um adam the previous owner was looking at moving on and doing bigger and better things everything worked out and that's how we came across bringing ace engineering in-house with steinjaeger so this wasn't just a way of getting further uh, up to the top in the listing in the phone book, right? Because I, I remember a lot of those triple A plumbings used to do that. You know, you get Ace Engineering at the top of the phone book. You know, you remember what a phone book is, right? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> I do. Um, haven't seen one in many years, and I'm, I'm guessing I'm going to see them in a museum here pretty soon. <laughs> This is going to put you at the top, you know, people will be able to find you under A for Ace Engineering and Fab.com. So anyway, I'm just messing with you. So uh, uh, tell us now this, the Steinjaeger uh, brand, uh, you guys are uh, into Jeeps. I would hope uh, you got to be if you've got a 2006 LJ on tons. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've dabbled in a few other things uh we still have a product line for mustangs camaros corvettes uh, a few side by sides but but our main focus is jeep um give you a little history on the name it's really a made-up german word um the germans will tell you it's not a real word (laughs) but most everybody's heard of jägermeister which jägermeister is master hunter um Jaeger being hunter, Meister being master. So we pulled the the Jaeger part out of there for hunter. And Stein is the German word for rock. So put that together, you've got rock hunter is ah. is, is the made up definition for Stein Jaeger. Yeah, I like that. I mean, sure, why not? I was thinking of the movie Pacific Rim. I couldn't remember exactly what the, they were flying around in those things, Jaegers or something. So... <laughs> You, you can have a little bit of uh, a little bit of promotion from those uh, the, the movie and the sequel. So that is really cool. And uh, and and Steinjaeger, how long have you guys been in business? Nine years. Uh, yeah, we s- we're coming up on nine years. I believe in February. I I started kicking the company off in February of 2013. Excellent. Uh, we started off with a uh, bone stock 98. TJ, uh, four cylinder, five speed, no AC, no no power, anything. Uh, that's that's what kicked it all off for us, and it's been a heck of a run since then. I sound like an off road rig. So you guys, uh, what all what all do things do you do for Jeep? Let's uh, we got a Jeep audience here primarily. So yep, tell us tell us what you can do for us. Uh, we're really good at tube and bar fabrication, so. So anything round on your Jeep, we do grab handles, we do tube doors, um, we do long arm kits for the TJ, we do short arm kits for JK, JL, uh, JT. Um, we also have have a sewing department in-house, so the solar shades, we call them teddy tops. 
uh, for cutting down the sun when your top's off. We make covers for your tube doors. Um, here recently, we've gotten more heavily into plate work, and we've got some storage baskets, um, which leads over to Ace of doing fenders and rock sliders, inner fenders, and as such. So I went over to steinjaeger.com uh, and went on the uh, click where it said Jeep parts. And my God, I just have a warm fuzzy. I see you have an XJ right there in the middle of the group of, uh, of the, the vehicles, the Jeeps that you support. And now this goes from the, the CJ7, uh, at least on the screen I'm looking at, the CJ7 all the way over to the JL and the JLU. I would assume that also includes the, the JT? Uh, yes, that does. Uh, most of our products that we designed for the JL cross over to the JT so far. Um, we will be adding a separate JT icon there shortly once once we finalize the lift kit on that um, and have a couple more products to fill that space. Right. So uh, how did you find your, your LJ? Because those things are a bit of a unicorn, uh, depending on when, when you get them. I don't know how long you've had yours. I want to say I've had it for five years. Uh, I was... I was looking for a full-blown wheeling rig. I really didn't have time to build one myself with everything else going on at work. I had a buddy that sent me a Facebook market uh, ad for an LJ that was four hours away from me that was built. And if you've ever bought a built vehicle, you know you, you pretty much have to rebuild it because it's not the way you really wanted it. So I bought a done rig and then rebuilt it. <laughs> um, it, as it sits, it's a 2006 LJ Rubicon with, I believe it's 24,000 miles on it. Oh my God. That's amazing. That is amazing. It, it, it's been a rough 24,000 miles. I'm going to say that, <laughs> but it's been a fun 24,000 miles. So where all of you, have you been in it? I mean, uh, are we talking uh, the, the Rubicon? Are we talking about Moab? Where, where, you, where have you been? I have not been to the Rubicon yet. I've been to Moab in it a couple of times. Uh, I've been out to Leadville, Colorado. I ran Carnage Canyon in it, which is a nasty trail. Um, I've, been, I've been down to the obstacle course at Jeep Beach. Um, I've been to... AOP, um, my home base park is going to be S'more Off-Road, uh, Southern Missouri Off-Road Ranch. Uh, it's where I spend most of my time at. Um, uh, I've taken that thing almost coast to coast at this point. Been out to Pennsylvania and wheeled. So. Well, being in charge of a, or a, a, a business, I would imagine that you don't get to wheel as much as you have to stand and talk to people <laughs> and network and stuff. Do you, do, you, uh, do you get a good balance of that? Do you just say, screw this advertising stuff, I'm going wheeling? There are days I do that, and there's other days that you're right. I have to stand there. I have to socialize. Um, I mean, that's the good thing now, though, like, We've all got radios in our rigs. We can socialize while we're moving. You know, <laughs> we pick true. up people on the trail. You know, come come on, follow us. We'll show you where you're going. And, you know, we got plenty of socializing. Once once the sun goes down, the night wheeling's done, we're all sitting by a fire. You know, everybody gets going. We can socialize then. Yeah, very Daylight's true. For, the, for wheeling. Yeah, very true. So that sounds like a, like a great life uh, to have. Now, uh, on the, uh, the ACE Engineering, I, I guess one of the things that a lot of people would be concerned about, maybe if they already have ACE products or they've been eyeballing the, the ACE products, uh, is there anything going to change that, uh, now that, that you guys are in charge of it? Uh, there shouldn't be anything that really changes because of the transition over to Steinjaeger. Um, I made a promise to the old owner that, I wouldn't degrade the brand by trying to cheapen it up $2 here and $2 there. Um, we're still going to support all the old products. The, the biggest change is something that, you know, none of us can help right now. And that's just this inflationary period we're in, you know, sheet metals skyrocketing worse than lumber did. 
And that's that's one of the biggest questions I get from from the people on social media is why did this product go up this much? Is it because you guys bought Ace and that that's not really it. Like if it would have stayed in Michigan or came down here, the price would have gone up no matter where it was because when cheap metal goes up 400 percent. Uh, uh, the product price has to go up as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, if if you've been buying food or maybe your spouse has been buying the food, I'm sure you're hearing how much food is increasing. So you can well imagine the things that, that aren't, and, and, and forgive me for saying so, folks, aren't absolutely necessary. I know, I know. It, sometimes you think it is. <laughs> when food is that important and it goes up, you know everything else has to as well. The great thing is, is that it's still available. We still have businesses that are building things that we can put on our Jeeps. We'll just have to uh, choose a little wiser for the for the time being. And uh, uh, it sounds like uh, uh, Steinjager and Ace is going to be uh, uh, good good picks uh, for uh, choosing wisely. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure there are things we could do to bring the price down, but you know, we we have a Midwest factory when. You know, between all the companies in house, we employ I don't know roughly sixty people. That you know, we have full time jobs with overtime, so it's not worth it to us to to source some of this stuff, you know, overseas or whatnot. Like we take pride that that this this stuff is made in America. It's made in the Midwest, hardworking blue collar people. Yeah, that's that's very important. And also, too, I think that when it's made in America, the quality is better. And, and I'm sure that's one of the things that people are concerned about uh, with the ACE acquisition is the quality changing. And that's not going to happen, I'm sure. No, no. Um, one of the things we did, I mean, we offered all of the employees that were up in Michigan, you know, the opportunity to come work for us, you know, the whether or not they wanted to move to central Illinois, I mean, had to weigh into it, but their main welder, the guy that lays down some of the prettiest welds I've ever seen his names, Carlos, he wanted, he loves the brand. He takes pride in his work. He wanted to come, come with. So we moved him down to our factory. He's still laying the same welds he's laid down for years up at ACE. So the quality isn't going to change. Oh, that's great. That's great to hear because I'm not, I've never uh, welded myself. I want to learn, but it always seems like when I get a part and I see the welds on there, even though I don't know anything about it, you can tell the quality of the weld, or at least I believe I can, by looking at just how beautiful those welds are. So uh, I think everybody knows how important it is if you're building a, a good product that you have somebody that has lots of experience in welding and just makes out, makes a, a great looking product. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, a good welder is a true artist, and and Carlos is an artist. Excellent. So, um, let me ask you about the uh, the XJ. Why are you guys supporting an XJ that <laughs> hasn't been built in, good Lord, 20 years? Because people still wheel. Um, <laughs> they keep asking us, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, able to manufacture your own products in-house lets me control my build quantities and I can, I can run lower quantity parts for some of, you know, the pardon me, but the less popular Jeeps. Yep. Yep. I know the XJ guys are, are going to yell at me for that, but well, I, I'm one of them. Uh, so I, um, I'm doing okay. <laughs> you know, and the other thing is a lot of the TJ parts cross over for the front steering. You know, we do a, a heavy duty crossover steering kits. One of our most popular parts. It's the same. Oh, so yeah. yeah. We we have uh, TJs and uh, XJ, and then I just recently got the uh, the JT that I was telling you about earlier. So uh, I know very well. I know firsthand. Uh, my, both my daughters have TJs. My wife has a TJ, and uh, I got an XJ, and uh, now I've got the uh, the JT. And it's 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 basically the same thing. There's small changes, but the basically yeah. the drive line is the same. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, we we had a a cheap XJ in house for for a while and honestly we know enough people when we need to prototype something we call them up and they drop an xj off for us and it's it's fairly inexpensive and like i said since we manufacture ourselves, i don't have to order ten thousand of something from china so mm -hmm. and, and you're so manu and your manufacturing's right there in the same building you're lo you're located in correct yeah yeah we have uh i 
I want to say it's right around 140,000 square feet of manufacturing. And, uh, we've got a couple hundred machines in the shop that we've got, got a lot of capabilities from tube bending to laser cutting, CNC bending, uh, brake presses, all sorts of stuff. So let's uh, let's jump up to the more modern uh, time. Uh, wh- what kind of parts do you carry for the the JL JLU? And I, I, I'm sure you don't you won't be able to say all of them, but maybe your your popular ones. Um, right now, I've got a fully double adjustable lift kit for the JL and JLU, and I've got my prototype that I took to SEMA for the JT. Um, it's interesting. We have a rebuildable rod end on the lowers, which gives you a couple of poly sleeves inside a housing that you can replace when they wear out or whatnot. So you get you get the articulation of a rod end, but you get that isolation from noise and vibration of a, of a poly or rubber bushing in it. So it's the kind of the best of both worlds in that matter. And that a product that we developed and designed in house for we've loosely called it the Jaeger joint. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if that will stick or if anybody will give me a cease and desist on that. So, <laughs> so we haven't officially named that. Um, but going double adjustable, it, it's so much smoother and so much slicker. You don't even realize it until you see it. Um, that even on a bent control arm, I've got, I've got a, I will call it a fastener, but it's a ladder bar adjuster that has male and female threads that you don't have to take the control arm off the mounts to adjust the length on it. So you have infinite adjustment. You're not limited to a half turn like you are with most rod ends and stuff like that. That's been a a pretty good seller of ours right now are those lift kits. We've got some storage boxes. We've got tube doors. We recently brought out our American flag doors, which have been a hit. They're plate steel doors that looks like you've got the American flag waving in the wind with the uh, armrest built into them. There's, there's been a lot of positive feedback on those with, with the American pride and everything going on right now. Um, those are our big sellers. We got some light mounts and some bumpers and stuff like that, but those those are probably the top three sellers for the JLJT right now. Yeah, I'm looking at those uh, flag USA flag doors uh, right now on the uh, Steinjager.com uh, uh, site. Those are those are nice, but they're blue. They should be red. You need to everything on your site should be red because that's the color of my my Chuck and my XJ. So a lot of people know us for it, but <laughs> we are kind of the color company. Um, we came out with. That's something I didn't tell you we had in the fact that we have our own powder coat line too. So I can switch up colors whenever I want. And almost every product I have, I offer in 20 different colors. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, so you're looking, you're looking at the blue doors, but I'm guessing if you look somewhere, there might be a little square box with some different colors on it that you can select between, between all 20 different colors that we offer that door in. So Jeep recently came out. I think it's, uh, I'm going to say this wrong. Tuscadero uh pink i call it just purple you know men generally go just make it the base color uh are, are you guys going to be having the the tuscadera uh pink for uh, for some powder coating question we get all the time is color <laughs> matching um it's really difficult to match up powder coat with like a liquid paint uh, yeah. we we have been able to find gecko green which seems to be a hot color yep. right now that they just released for the gladiator but that's the only true paint code color match color i have right now and the, the funny part about this conversation is i get to choose the colors most of the time and i'm colorblind oh no <laughs> so so you can thank me for all those obscure colors because i don't know what they are <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Uh, but uh, that, maybe that's a reason why there's 20 colors, 20 different colors. You go, well, screw it. I don't know what I got here. Yeah. Let's just make sure everybody has gets a little something they want. <laughs> exactly. 
Yeah, you got a little, a little bit, a little something for everything here on the JL. Uh, you got rock sliders. I see you've got uh, some flag holders, which is also a, a very popular thing, so people can fly those flags. And most often, the uh, the USA flag, uh, which is uh, really cool. I see uh, diff covers. Uh, there's uh, oh, there's the uh, uh, Klein Kleinometer. <laughs> <laughs> is what I call uh, how how uh, tight will my butt cheeks be on the seat? Uh, and I oh that's going to be that much, yeah. So uh, th- those are always great to see what your uh, off camper situations are. Exactly, it's it's built into the JT now. Oh, it is. I know it's that's really cool. But if you're if you're doing proper wheeling, you're not playing around with the dash too much. I actually uh, got myself in a little bit of trouble when I was trying to play with the the hill descent uh, control. Uh, wasn't, yep. wasn't paying attention to the, to the terrain and, and dropped down in a hole. And I was like, holy crap. I thought I was going to the passenger side wheel uh, uh, foot area uh, for a second. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes all those amenities actually get in your way. Yeah, it was. It, it's fun, but it was like, nah, I don't need to be doing that here. I'll do that uh, on a nice flat surface uh, that's an incline or decline uh, later. So, um, all, all the products that everybody's used to at Ace, and I, I, I apologize for harping on this, but all the products that people have been used to for, for Ace Engineering, they're still available. And, and, and as far as you're concerned, they're going to be available for, uh, for the future. Absolutely. Um, I'm actually in the process of taking everything from, from their system and plugging it into our system. And when I say plug it in, it's not that easy. So <laughs> no, right <it's> <laughs> now, we we do have some longer than normal lead times. Um, most of most of the customers have been awesome about it. Like we try to keep everyone informed the best we can. We miss one or two here or there, um, but you know we've offered people, you know, hey, that's going to be a long lead time. We can give you the money back, you know, for the product, you know, whatever it takes. And most of them say no. I ordered Ace because of the quality, uh, the strength, the looks. It's worth the wait. So we've had a, had great customers during this whole transition period that that have just kept us going and and kept our spirits up when when we think that we're taking too long. And by we, I mean me. Um, we did put a code together for the Jeep Talk Show for ten percent off on the Steinjager site. Um, I think it's. JTS for Jeep Talk Show ten will will get you ten percent off anything on the the talk show. So we can, it'll be good through I think February. So can't Excellent. quite pull the trigger a week from now. You got a little time. Yeah, I oh, appreciate that. That's great. We always love uh, 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 talking people into uh, talk, talking businesses into giving our listeners a little something like that. And ten percent off is great. Thank you very much. So that's JTS ten and like. Uh, like like uh, Luke said, it's a JTS, like Jeep Talk Show, and the number 10. That's a one and the zero for you people. Uh, 10% off uh, anything at the Steinjaeger store at uh, www.steinjaeger.com. I, I want to put a Y in there, but it's uh, S-T-E-I-N-J-A-G-E-R. So, yep. again, you, will, you guys will find that in the show notes. So, you know how the kids love the social media. Uh, where, where can we find, uh, the social media, I guess really both for Steinjaeger and ACE, uh, how would people find that and, you know, maybe see what's going on and see some of the, the good looking stuff that you guys have. Uh, um, both are pretty simple Instagram and Facebook with the company names. Uh, Steinjaeger is, I think at Steinjaeger Inc. But once, once you get through Steinjaeger, there's not many Steinjaegers to choose from. Um, and then ACE engineering is at ace engineering for both facebook and instagram yep pretty pretty self-explanatory i see you guys yeah, have yeah. a youtube channel do you guys do any uh installation uh, videos or, or what do you guys do on there yeah for the most part both ace engineering and Steinjaeger are all installation videos occasionally i get to go out and play and film and put some wheeling videos on but yeah, for the most part, we try to support our entire product lines with with YouTube install videos. I I do have uh, my edit style is quick and punchy. You know, tighten these bolts, skip to the next one, skip to the next one. But that's my attention span. I've <laughs> I've got about a thirty second attention span. Well, you got too many things so, to do to have more than a thirty second <laughs> attention span. Yeah, I figure you got the pause button and the rewind button. So. <laughs> 
I, I try to keep them short and sweet. I, I hate watching 20 minute install videos. I lose, lose my train of thought and I go work on something else. Oh, you know what I've been doing is I've been skipping over the, the three second intros where they have a little, little, you know, fancy little, uh, uh, CGI thing. I'm going, I'm not here for that. You know, click. Okay, now here we are, and this is the information part. And actually, if you're looking at an installation video, I think you're kind of jumping around anyway, because it's just like, especially if you got the stuff, you want to be out there installing it, not uh, sitting there uh, sipping coffee and watching an installation video. Yeah, hundred percent agree with that. <laughs> um, and, and you say that, and I know because I do the video editing too. That that my my beginning CGI stuff is 17 seconds. <laughs> Sorry. So, so skip to. Skip to the 18 second mark if you're yeah. watching our install videos. Yeah, that's that's the easy thing. It's not like you're watching, uh, you know, uh, mandatory TV anymore, where you have to watch exactly what they're feeding you. So, uh, you know, skipping over those uh, those intros uh, isn't uh, isn't a hard thing to do now, or and, and commercials as far as that goes. Well, that is great, uh, Luke. I really want to <laughs> hearing how busy you are, especially with two companies that you got to deal with and the transfer of. Uh, parts and things over from from one uh, company to another i'm just amazed that you had time to talk to us and i just want to really, really want to thank you for for taking that time to, to get here and i'm sure there's lots of stuff that we haven't talked about so we're gonna have to get you back on uh here in the future anytime you have something big coming out or something you'd like to announce that uh, to some uh, some g people please keep us in mind oh no problem it it was my pleasure um i've got plenty of time at night when i'm not at work so I could sit here and chat with you guys all night, but you know, you know what? I'm sure you've got other things to do as well. You remember what sleep is, right? <laughs> it's it's that thing I get like four hours of a night, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, I, f- I forgot to ask you one critical piece of information. What uh, what color is your LJ? It is silver with purple accents. I'm sorry, Luke. The correct answer would have been red. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thanks a lot for being on here with us, and uh, we'll talk to you again real soon. All right. I appreciate it. Hey, big thanks again now to Luke Connor for taking the time to talk about Stang Jaeger and their new acquisition of uh, Ace Fab, and that's a really big one right there. Yeah. And, of course, uh, a big shout-out to all those guys out there doing some really good work over there. Be sure to check them out, what they have to offer. Guarantee they take your Jeep to the next level. And if you have an idea for a guest, or maybe you work in the off-road industry, or maybe you know somebody who does, maybe you yourself would like to be a guest here on the Jeep Talk Show. We're always talking about people have, everybody has a Jeep story to tell. We want to hear yours. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact right now and share your idea for our next great guest. Who knows? It could be you. And coming up on our next episode with an interview, which uh, I think is going to be like January the 3rd because of uh, our Christmas week off. Greg Henderson of unofficialuseonly.com will be our guest. It is a long one-hour interview, and uh, if you're like me, uh, that's that's too short. It was so much fun talking to Greg. Uh, Now, if you don't know the name of either Greg or Unofficial Use Only, you certainly know the Jeeps that Greg has built in the past. And most, uh, and, yeah, and most recently, the Quadratech YJL at SEMA, which, by the way, uh, Bob, uh, two cheap Jeep guys, actually did a, uh, a video interview with him. And, and although uh, we, I've, ta- I've spoken with uh, Greg before, couldn't get him on the show, uh, Bob was instrumental. And uh, uh, I think he wouldn't leave Greg alone. He wouldn't walk away until Greg agreed <laughs> to be on the show. So uh, big thanks uh, to, to Bob, two cheap Jeep guys. And, of course, Greg Henderson. Don't miss that uh, that uh, interview. It's, it's a lot of fun. You must have needed this every day. I need it! It's the Jeep Talk Show's must-have stuff. Pick of the week for your Jeep. Well, since we talked about the 2007 and up uh, Grand Cherokees uh, and that sort of thing, I want to talk a little bit, of, or uh, about the Wranglers at least, I want to talk about the 2007 Grand Cherokees. Uh, now, those, these guys have uh, what, what we would call drive-by-wire technology, and it's not exactly the best in the world. It leaves a little, be, uh, little something to be desired, and this is going to take care of your acceleration woes if you have a Grand Cherokee. Uh, this thing is the, uh, it's the Pedal Commander, is what it's called, uh, PC31 for the model if you want to get technical with it. It's for the Jeep Grand Cherokee and is a throttle response controller essentially. And this is for the 2007 and up Grand Cherokees with a 3 liter or up to the 6.4 liter 
uh, V8 on this. And it is a little bit pricey, but you get what you pay for, as this thing will completely change the driving characteristics of your Jeep. It is $275, but here's what it does. It gives you faster acceleration. The pedal commander uh, system eliminates the delay from your electronic gas pedal. We're well, talking about that drive-by wire, allowing your 2007 and newer Jeep Grand Cherokee to accelerate faster, giving you giving your vehicle a night and day difference in performance, and it really will. Mm -hmm. Equipped with four different modes, uh, this thing has 36 different adjustable settings. Eco, City, Sport, and Sport Plus. Each mode has an additional nine adjustable settings to fine-tune to your liking, making this the best Jeep Grand Cherokee accessory. Gas savings, well, you actually, this thing can actually uh, help you save some MPGs. The Pedal Commander's significantly slow response can increase your Jeep Grand Cherokee MPG and save you up to 20% in fuel economy. And talk about quick and easy installation. The Pedal Commander is a simple plug and play device that takes only about five minutes to install and you're not going to need any tools. New Bluetooth, now Bluetooth compatible so you can control the unit using your free Pedal Commander app as well. Uh, don't worry if you still have any kind of a warranty left on your Jeep, it's not going to void it. <laughs> Pedal Commander will not void the warranty on your Jeep Grand Cherokee or leave any trace behind on your ECU if you're in one of those states that do uh, sort of uh, uh, you know, reporting or uh, inspections, things like that. I got a, I got a, uh, this reminds me of a Monty Python flying circus, uh, skit <laughs> that they did. Bear, bear with me here. And I think it'll make sense. Uh, okay. there's no turkey gobble involved. So, so bear with me. Um, <laughs> scientists developed a fruit, specifically a tomato that would, uh, know when things were going to happen and would, uh, it would flee the scene so it would protect itself. So, for example, you would go and buy the tomatoes at the store, and you're driving home, and, and just a, a fraction of a second before an automobile accident, the tomato would pop up and, and flee out all by itself, levitate and leave the vehicle. And it was also an early warning device for the driver. Uh, and so this is, I kind of think this same technology must be in use here, because when you press the pedal, this device has to know in the future that it needs to give the, 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 the fuel faster than when you press the pedal. You see what I'm saying? There's, a there's time technology involved here. In a way, if you really <laughs> want to go for a reach. Um, I think he's... <laughs> don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> there's no time travel or magic involved with this. Uh, but, but, it but, does. My, but my point is, is that how does it, how does it make it go quicker... Whenever you're pressing the pedal, why is there a built-in okay, delay? So, <laughs> okay, so remember that MDS technology we were talking about in my last segment? Uh -huh. This helps control that. Ah. Okay, that makes sense. Just answered all your questions. There you go. Now that that explains everything. <laughs> Except you, this works even when you're not on the highway, right? So that system should be engaged. So the MDS <laughs> system is not only active when it's on the freeway. It also works um, uh, when you're on startup as well. So <sighs> I don't like this. I don't like you, what they're doing. I, like when I said, you know, we can go into the weeds in this. You just so had to. Start let me let me just there. let me just make so. it simple. When you guys go to put a Hemi in your Jeep, get the 426 Hemi from the 60s. Now you're there, talking. There you go. <laughs> can avoid <laughs> so many issues. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. If you have questions, call the show right into the show. I will go ahead and answer them personally. <laughs> now that you must have a pedal commander throttle response controller for your own Grand Cherokee, uh, not Tony, uh, we're going to make it easy for you. <laughs> Just go to talkshow.com and look for the link in the show notes for episode 543. And don't forget, Jeeper, we've got a newsletter that you definitely need to be signed up for. It's your uh, it's your one best place to get all the inside information as far as what's going on on the show, what we have coming up, uh, some giveaways that we have coming up in the very near future, which we do. And you definitely want to uh, be the first in on that sort of information. And it's only going to be available in the newsletter. Of course, you can also find out how to join in on the show as we record it. That's right. If you want to be a part of the Jeep Talk Show, you can. Just sign up for that newsletter. And you can find out how. Go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out how to, well, click and click that link and sign up for the, uh, for the newsletter. And it's just as easy to unsubscribe as it is to subscribe. Well, that's it for the show for this week, my fellow Jeeper. Until next week, be sure to take that elf on a shelf and make it an appetizer for the garbage disposal. <laughs> oh, and as always, thank you for listening to the world's most downloaded Jeep podcast. Hey, this one goes out to Nikki G. Thanks for explaining the word many to me. It means a lot. 
<laughs> oh, nicely done. Oh, I'm guessing since 2010.